What's going on, everybody? Welcome in. Today we are talking about all things hot cue, uh, including hot cue strategy, how to use the hot cues, uh, how to change the hot cues, and all of that. So before we get too far into that, I just want to mention if those of you have not seen the song structure video that we did, uh, I want to encourage you to watch that because this is essentially kind of like a continuation of that. So if you missed it, here's some of the stuff that we covered in that video. Uh, we covered some basic music theory, so beats, bars, and phrases, sort of an overview of the mix, like what we're actually looking for, um, the different sections of the song, and then we went ahead and we mapped out, um, I have this term called mapping out the song, we basically deconstructed the song by uh, my group Feeling Good called Stranger, and we figured out the different sections, how long they were, and now we're getting ready to take all of this information and transfer it into our DJ software. So let's do it. All right, everybody, so I am using Serato DJ today. If we come on over to my laptop, we'll be able to see this. I've got the track loaded here on the deck. I am using this in offline player mode, so I have not connected in my controller, and I actually am doing this on purpose. Um, the reason for it is I wanna show you that you can do all of this in terms of figuring out your song, being able to set your hot cues. In case you didn't know, you can do all of this without the controller. Um, and I actually do a lot of this uh, preparation before gigs without the controller. So um, I think it's really useful to be able to get used to using the keyboard here versus using the pads on your controller. Um, all right, so we've gone ahead, we got the track pulled up. Um, a couple of things real quick, uh, if you weren't knowing this, plus and minus will help you zoom in and out of the waveform. So you can see this here. So if I hit plus, that'll zoom in, minus will zoom out. So that's particularly important because if you're gonna be using these hot cues to jump around in the track, you need to make sure that it is exactly lined up to the cue. Otherwise, there's gonna be a little space there and it's not gonna land right, right? Your timing is gonna be off. It's gonna throw the rhythm off of everything. So um, there is a bit of a hack here and I wanna show you this hack that I've come across. Um, it's this concept called quantize. I like to call it quantitize, but that's not actually how it's spelled or pronounced. So quantize is this button right here in the top left-hand corner. It's this little Q. And if I turn that on, uh, it will snap to the grid. And let me, let me demonstrate. So let me go over here and let me just set a Q. So let's come in here and zoom in. And let me just set a Q right here, right? Like as if I was, Oops, I was off a bit, right? So if I set a cue, uh, you can see that clearly this is off, right? That uh, here's, the, here's the hot cue, but here's where the hot cue should be. Now, let me, turn on, uh, let me turn on quantize, and now hit a cue, and look at where it set it. Oops, not there, let's go over here. Look at where it set it, right? That orange one is correct, it set it right on the grid. So what I like to do as I'm going through and setting these hot cues after I've mapped out my song is I turn on quantize and then that way I'm not so worried about having to stop, zoom in, set the cue, zoom back out, keep going, zoom back in, zoom out. It's a lot easier for me to just have quantize on and then I can just fire off the, the next cue, next cue, next cue. Um, all right. so. Before we get in and transfer this map over, I just wanna share with you my color key. So one of the most awesome things that I love about Serato DJ in particular is the fact that you can change the color of the hot cues. And I actually wasn't the one who came up with this. I, I consider myself a co-collaborator in this, but a student of mine, a former student of mine years ago, in a lesson asked me, what do the colors mean? Because if you go in and just kinda hit hit new cues inside of Serato, it, it makes every cue a different color. And so he had asked me, well, what do the colors mean? I said, well, they don't really mean anything. And he was like, well, could we make them make, mean something? And I was like, yes, that's genius. And then I started to think about it. And what's the thing that we need to know the most? We need to know the length the most. At first I thought, oh, well, maybe I'll make red stand for chorus or blue stand for a bridge or something like that. And in thinking about it, I was like, it matters less about whether that was a verse or a chorus or a bridge. What matters more probably is the length of it. So I started to develop this uh, method, this hot cue strategy, if you will. And if we can go to my whiteboard, I've got this uh, legend or this key that's set up here that I wanna share with all of you. Uh, yellow is four bars, 
Red is eight bars, 12 bars is dark blue, pink is 16 bars, and then I have these other two, jump to and loop. And sometimes I'll use other random colors for other random things, but for the most part, the ones that are on the left column, the four, eight, 12, 16, those are my most common that I use. In fact, actually, usually like red and uh, yellow, red and pink even, even more so than that 12 bar section. Um, but that way, if I see a, a mark of that color, I know how long that section is. I can instantly look at it and know how long the section is. So we're gonna now come over here and we're gonna transfer this up. So um, I am queued up. Let's go ahead and delete these cues, which by the way, the way to delete them is just hit the X and it'll delete them. Um, and then I'll show you how also we can change the color. So our first cue here on the one, we have an intro of eight. If I go back to my map, you'll see this. Um, we have an intro of eight bars. I mean, in fact, in this song, we'll have a lot of red marks, I imagine, because there's a lot of um, sections that are eight bars. And if I come deeper in here, and you can start to see, when you start to look at the waveform, you'll start to understand the dynamics of it and where the different sections are. Like, this is a build, and then this is gonna be our chorus right here. Here we go and one. And this, I'm gonna make red. So I right clicked on it, and uh, either control click or right click, and I can now change that to be red. You can also write on it by double clicking it. This is my intro. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. That was that little, that little section that was there, so I'm just gonna call this something else. I'm gonna, Color it purple. One. So I missed it. Let's do it again. One. Change that to red. That's the chorus as well. And you can see that on my map, right? That's this one uh, right here, right before the bridge. It's that one. And then we have this bridge. And then this builds again. By the way, the shortcut for selecting the next hot cue is option tilde, this little key here, okay? Um, and this is important too, because if you're gonna use the keyboard shortcuts, Serato has some great keyboard shortcuts. Um, one of them is you uh, hit one, two, three, four, five for the first five cue points. It's the same thing for being able to trigger them again. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, zero are for the right deck. So I'm gonna run out of ways to set these cues. So if I wanted to set cue six, seven, and eight, I would either need to use my mouse or I could use uh, the shortcut I just gave you, which is option and then tilde, which is the, the uh, key to the left of the one. Right? And um, so here we go. Let's finish this map here. We're almost done. Um, so this shouldn't be pink, this should be red. Although I guess I could make it pink because it's this eight and then the acapella outro. But I'm gonna separate them. For the sake of doing it, I'll make this pink, just to, so that I know that that's a longer one if I wanted to use it. Cool, and now the whole song is done. And now you can see I've got the whole thing mapped out. I really don't need this little section here, but if I want to, I could have that. And, and for the sake of doing this, this isn't necessarily a, a video about looping, but I'll show you this anyways. Um, I can go ahead and set a loop here, maybe set like a, an eight beat loop here. So that's gonna be a two bar section. Eight beats is two bars, right? And and then I would make that green based on my map. And maybe that's a section that I would wanna use. 
Um, in another video, I can also show you how we can use loops, how we can save loops, how we can do all of that as well. But this is sort of my hot cue strategy that I'm using here. The greatest part about this, and I'm gonna do this here in a moment, um, the greatest part about this is that these colors become really helpful when even just taking a quick glance at the tracks, um, even after they have them loaded up on the controller. And I'll show you that in just a moment. Hopefully this makes sense to you. Please take this uh, key, this legend if you want, and apply this to yours, or be able to modify that in any which way. Make it work for you. Ultimately, at the end of the day, this is about making a system and making that system work for you as a DJ. You're the one who's gonna be using it. Um, but before we get out of here, I wanna show you how this all translates over to the rig. All right, so now that we're on the controller, you can see that the colors come through and actually are really great because they are here right on the pad. So I can look over at a glance and know exactly how long that section is that I have that's coming up. Um, and it makes it really, really helpful to be able to um, know how long, right on the fly, how long that section is. Um, I'm gonna mix two songs together for you just real quick, just so that you can sort of see. So I'll mix into, um, or sure, I'll mix out of this maybe here. Um, Back that up a little bit. All right, here we go. Should be playing together for eight bars. Four more bars. All right, so now that we got that mixed down, I wanna show you one other thing because I realized that I should have another hot cue in the very beginning. So if I wanted a hot cue here in the intro, like let's say halfway through the, uh, through the intro and I wanted to set a hot cue there, I can. And now if I set a cue, you'll notice that it popped in over here in uh, the slot two because I have a setting on right now that is to sort cues and loops chronologically. So let me show you where that's at. Hold on, let me make a note on this. That's halfway through my intro. And this is the setting that I have on. Sort cues and loops chronologically. So that helps me out in case I miss something and I wanna go back and, oh man, I need to reset that course or, oh, there was another section that I wanted to make note of. And then that way, everything that I have is lined up in order. You'll see it also displayed on the controller. It's great. So that's just a little bit of basics around um, basic hot cue strategy. There's so much more to it. You can develop your own system. My biggest thing to you is to make this music yours. That'll help give you the confidence when you're out there live mixing in front of other people. You don't have that weird feeling of like, ah, I don't know how to get out of this song or I don't know how to get into this song. So make sure to do your work, do your homework before you go out and play. I'll see you next time.